Ascension. So, you know, what is ascension? Obviously, we know ascension happens primarily within, but, you know, there's a lot of discourse around an ascension of uh, going from 3D to 5D, etc., etc. But I think what what a really good book I've gleaned a lot of this knowledge from as well is, is this one right here by Pao Chang called Word Magic, The Powers and Occult Definitions of Words, uh, which I highly recommend everyone to buy and read and support this man's work because it's such a good introduction as to the tricks and traps um, and the, the magic used in the language and all the practices today of the systems they have in place in order to dumb humans down. Um, so you're just this is an excerpt. I've got a few slides of um, an excerpt out of this, this book, which I think is really worth sharing and reading out. So this is on the topic of ascension. Every religion of mankind has its own version of ascension. For example, some religions teach their followers that only the chosen people can ascend or only God can make someone ascend. Other religions, example the New Age, have said extraterrestrials will come from outer space to help us to ascend. In Christianity, it is taught that Jesus will one day come from heaven to save his people and bring them back to the kingdom of God. With so many different versions of ascension, how do you know which one is correct? To know if the ascension technique you are using may help you achieve spiritual freedom and ascend to heaven, ask yourself this question. Does this version of ascension teach me knowledge of empowerment and truth and how to respond and how to be responsible for my spiritual growth if your answer is no you should stay far away from it any teaching that teaches you to rely on an external savior to save you will not empower you to achieve spiritual freedom this type of teaching is often used by the dark forces to condition you to think and act like a slave the idea that an external messiah or an et race will soon come to save certain groups of people is a psychological operation that is used by the dark forces to keep people living in a state of mental slavery. Basically a bunch of doormats doing absolutely nothing but expecting change. That's the definition of insanity. It's doing the same thing but accepting, expecting different results. To find more evidence that the dark forces may be planning to harvest people during ascension, we need to investigate and study some of the hidden messages in the movie Jupiter Ascending. Before we do this, it's important to be aware that the dark forces and their flesh and blood minions like to use many movies and TV shows to disclose what they are doing or planning to do to mankind. The Matrix is one of the best examples of a movie that reveals to people the agendas of the dark forces in plain sight. One of the main reasons why the dark forces and the dark magicians disclose their agendas in movies and TV shows is because they do not want to violate people's free will. Furthermore, most people do not take the messages in movies and TV shows seriously this allows the dark forces to show their agendas in plain sight without worrying about people becoming aware of their evil deeds. Be aware that they also like to use other media to reveal their agendas such as video games, cyberpunk 2077, music video, newspaper and magazine. But telling people what they are doing to mankind through movies, TV shows, music videos, video games etc. The dark forces and their flesh and blood minions are giving people many chances to say no. When people ignore the dark forces' messages and choose not to say anything, it means that they do not care enough to exercise the power of consent. Therefore, the dark forces can use that as an excuse to proceed with their diabolical plans. Remember, silence is a form of consent. I just realised I've got the music off here. Let's put the music back on, a little, a little background ambience. Here we go. Right, so, yeah, for you... For you to not blindly give the dark forces your implied consent, you need to be aware of what they are doing. Your awareness is one of your most important spiritual powers for stopping the dark forces. When you become aware of what they are doing, you can say no. If enough of us say no, the dark forces will have to back off. If they refuse to back off and take actions to harm us, they will have to face the cosmic forces and the justice system of God. All thoughts, intentions and actions are known by God and there is no escape in his laws. Let us focus our attention back to the movie Jupiter Ascension. Shortly after the halfway point of this movie, there is a scene where Titus shows Jupiter a room full of thousands of vials that are filled with youth serums. By drinking the serums, it allows Titus and his people to live for thousands of years. The shocking thing about the serums is that they are made from harvesting dead people. Based on my research on ancient knowledge, the secret ingredient that gives the serums the healing effect of longevity is i the golden fluid that is believed to be stored in the spine, like we talked about before. So this is a scene out of uh, Jupiter Ascending, which I can only find in Spanish, I believe. Um, couldn't find one in English, but basically I'll read it out and then kind of play it so you've got the visuals. But basically Titus is this character here, if you haven't seen the movie, <coughs> who's 
uh, one, one of the rules or one of the family members as part of this this um, corporate conglomerate, cosmic corporate conglomerate, um, interplanetary kind of empire, which harvested this this serum from humans. Um, so and then Jupiter is this kind of character who was the mother of him, <coughs> but kind of had during the latter periods of her life an awakening where she realised what they were doing was like very wrong, parasitical, you know, consuming the life force from these sentient beings, human beings. So she incarnated as Mila Kunis in on Earth, and so they, they obviously realised this to try and track her down. So her children or you know sons and daughters were able to try and get her to sign away the empire to them so they can have full control um, of the corporation so titus here come with me jupiter what is that titus has many names this player so i kind of talk through it just mute it titus come with me jupiter what is that titus has many names regen x resell nectar there are various levels of usefulness and quality but this is the most pure and most valuable solution made by the house of brassics Jup jupiter Kali came out of a bath titus naturally my sister didn't explain what it is or where it comes from it comes from people each unit is refined from approximately 100 human beings jupiter what titus your planet is a farm jupiter there are thousands of planets like yours set up by families like mine to supply an ever-increasing demand for more time Jupiter, are you saying you killed 100 people to make this? Titus, not me, but yes, someone did. Not unlike butchering a herd of cattle. Jupiter, oh my god. And what's interesting is Abra Abrasix, Abraxas, which is their, their name, um, it's kind of a play on the word Abraxas, which in Gnostic Christianity, a mystical fellow who is claimed to be both an Egyptian god and a demon. His name contains the number 365, the number of the days in the year. And this is out of the book of Goetia, Demons. Um, so they could be, you know, again, hinting um, and kind of letting us know who these, these entities are that are involved in this harvesting of energy. So I, I believe there obviously is like a, a culmination and maybe like a mass harvest event, but from cradle to grave, all throughout man's evolution, <coughs> this, this happens. As people born into this realm and die, from cradle to grave, if you're contracting into these governments and deceitful contracts with the birth certificate fraud with the stock market, um, and you know, being part of this debt-based fiat currency system, taking mortgages out, which is just a death pledge, signing up to all these agreements and contracts, like I said, the devil's in the detail, then you're you're pretty much, you know, giving your energy away. You're consenting that you want to be harvested. You're not willing to, you're incompetent to look after your own affairs, govern your own contracts, look after your own body and health for that matter. So you you're literally just putty in the hands of these demons, um, which, you know, they they need you to be like that in order to get away with this stuff like i said like you know power chang said in this book and i said they have to engineer consent and strip away your free will so another good scene um is of this one in again jupiter ascendant new serum files it takes life to give life you know the ouroboros this is the snake eating its own tail you know everything ends up in the mouth of another creature in this universe the plants live in love and service to the zebra. The zebra lives in love and service to the lion, and the lion dies and returns its energy to the soil to feed the microorganisms, so the cycle repeats itself. Who who do you live in love and service to? You may well be tricked to giving your energy soul away to another entity higher up the food chain. Life is an act of consumption, Jupiter. This is what he says, and I'll play in a second. To live is to consume. And isn't that interesting? That literally this whole universe literally is kind of cannibalistic, if you think about it. We you no, know, it takes life to give life, we, <laughs> and this this is otherwise tying into the the demiurge and the archontic version of reality, and how everything needs to be kind of fed upon itself, like a virus basically. Um, but maybe it's necessary for essential. But this is just something I've come into the awareness of. And thought mm, that's quite interesting. However, it is a cycle, and it is it does work beautifully well. Nature and God's law, the natural law, in the natural world is just in perfect harmony and balance until obviously man comes along and does such things as commercial farming, poisoning the soils, which disrupts this organic cycle of life, um, you know, which poisons everything along the food chain. Um, so it makes me think that if they are here to harvest souls, they obviously don't care about the quality of the physical body. It's all about the energetic level, the energetic um, kind of energy, I guess, that we give off and emit. Um, because look around you, everyone's sick up to the eyeballs with all kinds of chronic diseases. We've never lived in a period of humankind where we've had this amount of diseases in 
toxicity and environmental toxins in, in, our, in our environment as well as malnourished foods um, and that's a very dangerous combination and just look at who's benefiting from this it's the medical industries and the supplement industries you know all there designed to keep people vertical and signed on to the allopathic um, demonic healthcare system um, where you subscribe for life basically and, and line in the pockets of the, the medical practitioners doctors and these drug companies big pharma and supplement companies <laughs> stimulant companies um, so yeah it's all very obvious so yeah we just we'll play this because this will reveal a lot as well what we just talked about my mother told me what was necessary to rule in this universe by killing people I create life and I destroy it life is an act of consumption Jupiter to live is to consume now the human beings on your planet a media resource waiting to be converted into capital. And this entire enterprise is just a small part in a vast and beautiful machine defined by evolution, designed to a single purpose. To create profit. That's what your mother taught you, then I could see why you hated her. I loved my mother. And yet you're trying to kill me. My mother made me understand that every human society is a pyramid and that some lives will always matter more than others. And it's better to accept this than to pretend it isn't true. Is that why you killed her? How dare you! There you go. <laughs> so, you know, it's an interesting concept, isn't it? Life is an act of consumption, Jupiter. To live is to consume. Inevitably, human beings are resources and their capital and the end goal is profit and just look at the worlds that we have created or allowed to happen down here in this economic system which is completely engineered and controlled um where they row the economy for you know good times bad times the banking system they, they they pull all the strings it's it's like it's in place it's perfectly in place in order to not only siphon our sweat equity from this system through taxes and this debt-based fiat currency system and fractional reserve lending and all this, that, and the other mortgages, where they just, you know, they, they strip us of all our wealth, our God-given wealth through these SETI KV trusts and stuff. But this, this, is prob this is also going on on the energetic level. As above, so below, there is no separation from the densities. Everything that's happening down here with the contracts of what we experience when we have to pay taxes, which is fraudulent, interest on loans, which are backed by nothing but our belief, and all these hidden contracts which are sucking us into being liable and gullible as a, as a debtor, as a debt slave, as a serf, serving the elite masters, as it were, the cabal, it's, it's, it will have its emanations and origins in the higher densities, in the higher realms, at a soul, at a mental, emotional, and soul and spirit level. And so, you know, this <laughs> it's why it's so important to become aware of this and claim back your sovereignty, remember who you are. So we've got Revelation 14, going back to Revelation, harvesting the earth and trampling the wine press. It's very interesting reading into this now. So what it says in the Bible about this. I looked, and there before me was a white cloud, and seated on the white on the cloud was one like a son of man. Well, isn't that interesting? Aquarius is the son of man. With a crown of gold, again, a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. This is otherwise sim symbolizing Saturn. Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, take your sickle and reap, because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. 
Another angel came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. Still another angel, who had charge of the fire, came from the altar and called in a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle, Take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes from the earth's vine, because its grapes are ripe. The angel swung his sickle on the earth, gathered its grapes and threw them into the great winepress of God's wrath. They were trampled in the winepress outside the city. The blood flowed out of the press, rising as high as the horses' bridles for a distance of 1600 stadia. So the sickle is the symbol of Saturn. This is the glyph of Saturn in astrology. And it's got the cross of matter above the spirit of the curve, the spiral of nature of spirit <clears throat> and all cosmic electromagnetic forces that you know basically create all life. And so the sickle is obviously seen in harvest and used in farming for harvesting. And here's the you know the golden crown thorn, crown of thorns, the golden crown, and the, the grim reaper, as it were, coming to reap the souls. Um, which is Satan. And what's quite interesting is it mentions here God's wrath, or Satan, Saturn, is otherwise wrath in the seven deadly sins. Um, so this is probably, a, again, going back to ritualizing, giving away a consent in terms of willingly wanting to be harvested by you know following this religion without actually looking into its deeper meanings and to the gods who we are worshipping and given our consent to. And this is old man Kronos. You know, he, he eats his children. So we come, if, we, if we're made manifest, if we're in, you know, Satan's kingdom, 666, Satan is the prince of this world. And he's got all his minions in place and all the systems in place to govern. And he's engineered consents. He's stripped the free will of the people. They're none the wiser because they're just, you know, programmed to consume and follow the Joneses and just, being trained by what the government tell them to do and dictated to until they die. Well, this is exactly what happens. You know, you, you, you're born into the system. They take your crown by registering you at birth. So you've just become nothing more than a ward of the state, a vessel um, without a flag or shield. So you, you're salvageable and you're there to serve the debt, which is sin. So you sin your whole life. You take all these contracts. You take out a death pledge in the form of a mort gauge. And so you continue to sin. <laughs> and blaspheme the, the true God, you desecrate your temple by eating processed garbage, and then you end up retiring, become tired again, and then you die where you crawl into a coffin with six sides, which is the hexagon, which is seen here on the North Pole of Saturn, where you again consent to being harvested and where you're probably going to be met with Again, the tricksters in the in the astral realms where because you haven't done any spiritual work and you're none the wiser, you'll be spat back into another human body without any memory. And here you go again, Groundhog Day, when this time it's the whole lifetime um, where you're just going to be, your energy, your soul energy is going to be siphoned from cradle to grave, you know, because these entities are being detached from source, which is the eternal fountain of energy, which can feed all things. Um, so they have to feed like parasites do, have to feed off of other life forms in order to um, preserve their species. <clears throat> so it's a big problem. It's a huge problem. Um, so yeah, again, just showing you the symbologies and the links here. So Saturn moon matrix technology, we talked about the rings binding Saturn, it used to be a bright star, it used to be in a binary system, two stars, which is depicted in a lot of movies. If you see Star Wars and that, there's often two suns in the, in the horizon, in the atmosphere depicted there on movies. Um, it's other, otherwise being used to fuel <clears throat> the AI, artificial intelligence, technologically run energy extracting matrix uh, via, you know, these planetary systems and this, this cosmic virus, as it were, it is a virus and it's at a cosmic level, sweeps into these otherwise organic planetary systems and solar systems and you know, destroys the planets if there's any defenders there and goes to war and basically enslaves the ones left over once they've stripped their free will and have all of this set up, um, as we see now on planet Earth, basically, where everyone's contracting to give away their energy and sovereignty. And this is quite interesting. There's a film, um, the latest Space, Space Jam film. Um, you have an AI overlord god um, called LG Rhythm inside of the Warner Brothers servers, 
and he calls it the serververse. And it's laced with hexagram technology, which again is just going back to carbon, which is the sixth element. Nothing evil about it, but it just goes to show, you know, that the the, <laughs> the prominence of the hexagon pattern here in this reality in carbon, carbon-based reality, six six six, and you know, who who may be the god of um this reality that we're in, who you know, who is your god, like I said before, just think where do you think you are? We could we could very well be in hell, but this this is otherwise a perfect little snippet of LeBron James being sucked into the serververse, which is riddled with the carbon six 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 hexagram patterns found on Saturn, um, where he's then sucked into a virtual reality system. What in the Matrix hell? Welcome to what the Matrix hell? hell. It's sucked in. Welcome to. And he has to play a game in order to get himself out again. And it's all, again, under contract. And so this, there's all this funny business going on because once you're sucked into someone else's realm, if they're gods, well, it's very difficult, isn't it, in order to have any control. Um, but it's all based on free will. And so this is very interesting. There's a lot of films out here where, that have come out. Another one which is, uh, I think, called Infinite with Mark Wahlberg in. And there's a device there by the, the antagonist in the film who shoots, there's a, there's a weapon he has that shoots into the back of the mind or into the person. And if it attaches, it sucks their consciousness and their soul into an artificial simulated reality where he just keeps them stored so they can't reincarnate in order to come back and try and stop him from destroying the earth, uh, which is <laughs> it's very telling. And then also you have here out of Star Trek, the old famous Star Trek scene, which I'll play, which is going to be self-explanatory. To help emphasize this kind of matrix reality that we may be in and what may happen after you die. Who's right? I heard two back in Jakarta and the doctor. You're an alien. You've created all these hallucinations, haven't you? This is what my species does. At the moment, just before death, one of us comes to help you understand what's happening, to make the crossing over an occasion of joy. And what is that? Our matrix where your consciousness will live. I was being truthful when I said it was a place of wonder. It can be whatever you want it to be. Then why didn't you tell me this from the beginning? Why pretend to be my father? Usually people are comforted to see their loved ones. It makes the crossing over a much less fearful occasion. I've done this many times, but I've never encountered someone so resistant. Something's happened. The alien presence is getting stronger again. Fight it, Catherine. Fight it just a little longer. I'll have to try a Thoron pulse. My people are telling me to fight. They're trying to save me. They're trying out of desperation. It's hopeless. You're the one who sounds desperate. I don't get the feeling they're trying to make me comfortable. You're only interested in my agreeing to come with you. Because it's inevitable. And you don't strike me as any kind of good Samaritan. You're more like a vulture, preying on people at the moment of their death when they're most vulnerable. I've waited for you. I've been patient. But your patience is very thin. What's the real reason you want me in that matrix? Somehow I don't think it has anything to do with everlasting joy. You must go with me. If you could force me to go, you've done it already. You need me to agree, don't you? I have to go voluntarily. Wouldn't that be better than standing here in this endless debate? Let me tell you this. We can stand here for all eternity. And I will never choose to go with you. This profession, Captain, you face death every day. There'll be another time, and I'll be waiting. Eventually, you'll come into my matrix. And you will nourish me for a long, long time. <laughs> Go back to hell. God. Right in your face, people. What in the matrix, hell? It's so obvious. It's so obvious what's going on. And this is the reason why they don't teach you your rights in school. They don't teach you anything about the legal system, about contracts, what constitutes a valid contract, how to stand up for your rights, you know, what the governments actually are and what they're doing, the banking system, the monetary system, all these things, nutrition, because celestial parasites, astral parasites, have to rely on hosts that are ignorant and unawares that a parasite exists within them. Just as you would not, 
realise that you probably have a parasite, fungal infection, based on your diet and all the commercial farming that's been going on and the food you're eating, they will not pose a problem to you unless you become aware. Then once you become aware and you start actually taking action to get rid of them, that's when they start putting up a fight. And this is why the same thing happens when you awaken sometimes, especially with me, with what I found. I've awakened and so I've sent ripples out there in this, this you know, collective unconsciousness of humanity on planet Earth here, which has been picked up on, like many other light workers here at this time. And that does pose a problem to these celestial parasites because once their food supply goes, they cease to exist. Um, but they can only cease to exist if we're learned in these things and become aware and stop becoming ignorant. Like I said, knowledge is power, ignorance is weakness. And so it's plain to see you know, why they have to control everything because if we suddenly realise who we are and how powerful we are, they, they have got no hope. They, they can't manipulate us any longer. Um, and so, yeah, these this is why getting educated is key. And this is why they don't teach you about these things spiritually, especially in the Western world, um, to prepare yourself, you know, for this kind of charlatan intervention that will happen beyond death in order to suck you back in to the, the artificial matrix again. You know, so pay attention. You know, that's why sovereignty, when you when you master the master you and claim back your sovereignty and your crown down here in this realm in this life it will be emanating and echoing through all the densities and you will carry that consciousness awareness of your power god-given spiritual powers and sovereignty into the afterlife and into all other lives and you'll be able to escape this and go back to your true divinity um, and or help actually shape shift the earth so it doesn't become this farm and it can actually bring heaven on earth rather than hell on earth uh, which is currently kind of got its roots um you know, embedded into every fucking orifice of this planet and every chakra system of the planet where they've built all these cancerous concrete stinking pot, stinking pots we call cities, like otherwise cancer patches um, over the chakra points of the earth. They know exactly what they're doing. If you look at all the temples and churches, everything they've built, everything they knocked down like the ancient temples of Atlantis and stuff, buried underwater, they've now, you know, built their fucking shitty little cities over these chakra points and ley lines in order to help submit and keep Mother Earth subdued to this low density where this slow material carbon-based 666 reality can uh, be made manifest through us in our fallen state with our DNA being switched off and the things they've done with the genetic ma manipulation and all the experiments, experiments they've been running so they can continue to basically harvest um, it's, it's like a kindergarten um, and the Garden of Eden is otherwise, you know, you think of Garden of Eden, eating, um, we're a garden and this is a farm and they're just farming us um, like we farm animals, um, but they can only do it for our ignorance. So this is the whole point. Wake up. <laughs> Don't give me your consent. And so the things which we'll, we'll go about at the end of this presentation coming up quite soon, I'll talk about what you can do. Um, which all have, you know, fundamental effects and really, really important to do um, in order to dispel the fear and the self-limiting beliefs that have been programmed into you in order to set yourself up to transcend all this bullshit, um, not only in this life, but, you know, in the life beyond. Um, so you can seek everlasting life back to source and your true self and your true cosmic family um, who are probably all waiting for you just to wake up and realise to do this thing and be be born again, basically as as a god or goddess, um, and, and gifted, you know, all the all the wonderful gifts to be able to and responsibilities to be able to um, create your own worlds and universes. So ascension, separating the wheat from the chaff, good from evil, ignorant from the aware, wheat from tares, sovereigns from slaves, God's children from the matrix, automatrons. So ascension, there's no denying this. It's just the natural evolution of everything in the natural world, including ourselves. It just depends on what kind of ascension you're subscribed to, um, because there obviously are always deceivers, um, which you can see just even in this physical reality, many dodgy second-hand um, car salesmen. You know what I mean? I think that's what these kind of celestial parasites are kind of like um, up there in the higher realms to convince souls to come down here in these bodies, to inhabit these bodies. Um, unwittingly sign into contracts uh, where they kind of give their their life away for many lifetimes until they work it out. Um, but you also have 
one, you know, you also have times like this are going to separate the wheat from the chaff, so the good from the evil. And so God knows who's good and who's not and who's worthy of inheriting the kingdom of God, which is, you know, inheriting their, their true selves again because they've been responsible, they've woken up, they're no longer a child, so to speak, in terms of being incompetent and a ward of the state. They have taken back their full sovereignty. They've taken it upon themselves to respect the body, learn about nutrition, exercise, psychology, spirituality, contracts, governments, money, supporting the earth and one another and helping to share the truth because the truth is like sunlight to a vampire to these entities, trust me. And I've even been out of body and I've whispered the words truth and it vibrated and casted out evil astral parasite entities um, that are otherwise, you know, caused me a little, little bit of havoc um, during the evenings, during the nights where they, they try and disrupt your sleep. They just toy with you. Um, and so they can only, again, they can only toy with you if you've forgotten how powerful you are. Um, and so, you know, I'm flogging a dead horse here, but hopefully the message is, is sinking in. But until you have these experiences and see this first time where you can literally cast out demons and dictate to them what can and can't be done, they listen to you because you are literally made as an, in the image of God. You are literally a miniature version of God. And so you have all the powers of God. And so they can only violate you and toy with you if you've forgotten who you are. So yeah, let's just play this a sec. <clears throat> the parable. Again, the ascension and what's going on. People being separated. The, the same day road. when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man, which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay. Lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together unto the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, See the sick sickle? The reapers? First, gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh the tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them. So just goes to show you even there in the Bible, they show he speaks in parables. It's not literal. He's otherwise trying to tell you about, you know, separating good from evil, recognizing who's worthy and who's not, you know, who's done the work, who's become responsible for themselves and their souls. There's a lot of children in adult, adults' bodies and our, our soul evolution here, I believe, the majority of which are still very young, they've still got a lot to learn. And that's why there's, you know, over time, there's so many saints, seers, and higher souls from, you know, ancestors and people who lived there before, maybe ascend, you know, ascended masters, who come back just to remind humanity of, you know, their, their true divinity and that, you know, stop giving your consent away, stop giving your power away to parasites because if you if you don't take responsibility of your own power then someone in the universe or some things in the universe will put your energy to good use um and so it's like anything if you neglect something then you know someone's going to come along and one man's junk is another man's treasure so your soul if you think of your body and your soul and your whole experience in life is junk 
well then you know it's another man's treasure and that that treasure unfortunately um you know seen in the eyes of the parasites and that they'll they'll put you to good use don't don't you worry about that uh, so until you come into your own power and realize you know everything you do the choices you make is otherwise akin to you know your your soil is your your subconscious mind and the sows that you you the seeds that you sow are what you're going to reap and the fruits that you're going to bear on your tree which is your whole life and experiences and what's outwardly, outwardly expressed for you as a person um because everything is weighed and measured and counted even your thoughts like i said before nothing nothing can god knows all um it's omnipresent i mean we are one of we are literally a refracted version of god experiencing ourselves with all these different um you know bodies and characters it's just we need to learn we were given a, a divine gift of the ego in order to separate ourselves to have these experiences to experience one another as the one true self as source however don't get me wrong evil does exist and like i said with the the video game called fable you can go through that game making decisions and the decisions actually outwardly change your appearance based on how you what you do your thoughts words and deeds um and so what we may be coming up to like i said before there's no denying this ascension discourse narrative that's that's happening in the book of revelations given the great sun in heaven also looking at all the films jupiter ascending you know pao chang's book the uh you know what's talked about of the the wheats and the tares cheeses they're, they're obviously in obviously an eternal ascension which you know happens in these these particular times during planetary evolution cycles as well coming out the Kali Yuga and this that and the other coming into the changing or the dawning of a new age Aquarius that there's specific windows in time and opportunities for souls to really elevate their growth and to maybe transcend out of um, limitations and ignorance and things that are otherwise holding them back um, and so this is this is why it's you know very very important to come into the knowledge of these things and exercise them not just you know listening to this and say oh yeah yeah yeah, this is you know completely agree and resonate with all this but go away after this and actually put some of this in action like you know which we'll go through which i have i have a course on